I don't want to panic after game one. Who knows? You know, they had two big practices prior to that game. What does it look like next week? But one of the things that the 49ers have been able to rest their laurels on in the past is that they've always had depth. And when players go down, it's okay. Next man up. We trust them. That might not be the case this year if what we saw on Sunday is the true roster depth. What do you think about the roster depth? Is there a concern for you? Talk me off the ledge because I know you're about to, so go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. This is why we have Tuesday. this Tuesday night show is because <laughs> – we have all the pessimism where Jesse's uh-huh. been in his spaces and on his yeah. on his uh, mm-hmm. Twitter Twitter X or whatever it's called right now, and, yeah. and they all that echo chamber just talk themselves into and wild takes, you know, like yo, Kyle Shanahan needs to be this, and the, the team's already failed, and oh my god, like all of a sudden <laughs> this team went from thirteen wins to are they even gonna are they even gonna win one game, you know, like so. There's a reason why backups are backups, and there's a reason why starters are starters. Jesse, tell me, when has been the point where every single starter went down on the defense and every single backup player had to play without any starters mixed into them? Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl two years ago is the only thing I can think of offensive line. And even then, there was starters still there mixed in that offensive line. It wasn't just five new players uh, that go in. The game that we just watched on Sunday was every single backup, guys that probably might not even be on the team You know, when, when the season starts, without a single starter, right? And the level of starter that we're saying is missing, Jesse, aren't just rotation players. We're talking about all pro level starters that are in there. Now, when you when you get called all pro, Jesse, do you think you make the game easier or harder for the people that are on the field with you? Oh, way harder. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a defensive line that are mixed with, you know, these the second and third string guys that Definitely didn't look great on their own, right? I think Farrell got a sack. He looked like, you know, he had some juice in, in a, certain, some, some, a couple of plays against his former team and whatnot. But whomever those guys are being mixed in, there's going to be a Bosa, Armstead, or Hargrave out there at all times. One of, one of those three are always going to be out there, or two of those three are always going to be on the field at, at one point or another. And that's who the offensive line is going to be. Uh, geared towards so these backup players aren't going to be seeing the same type of looks that they were seeing in this game they're going to be seeing isolated one-on-ones where they can have a chance to play against players that aren't paying attention to them right the the secondary is going to have a mooney ward uh you know a funga uh you know uh, uh Amador lenore we know the linebackers are always going to have elite peak players there it's not the same. And then go to the offense. Same thing, right? We're, when we're talking about the players that we're missing, we're talking about all pro talent. Uh, we're talking about Debo, CMC, Juszczyk, Kittle, uh, Trent Williams. Like the, the levels between who was on the field and who wasn't on the field is insane. So to look at this and be like, we have no depth, we don't need, we don't need 24 30 players of depth. We just need one or two from each position that can go in and be part of a rotation, be effective, be productive, maybe come in for a game or two here and there when players are dinged up. And I think that we have that type of depth. I think that this this overreaction to think we ever had the type of depth where our second team could just come in and dominate. I don't think we've ever had that on on as the 49ers, and we've always had – really, really deep teams. Yeah, they, they definitely have. I, I guess the question becomes this, and it's something that I talked about really early in the offseason, and I didn't... I'm not even saying that it's it's gotten to this point yet. Maybe it has. I mean, if, if it continues to look like this, then it that it's definitely gotten to this point. But my point is, is that they spent a lot of capital on Trey Lance, which for what, whatever reason we want to paint, that capital is not being put to use right now, okay? So you've put all that capital there. That is the capital you needed 
to continue to replenish the cupboard. You look at what the Philadelphia Eagles were able to do. They lost a lot of talent, but in one draft, because they had so many picks, they were able to replenish the cupboard and stay cheap while paying their you know, top 10 quarterback. You look at the 49ers, who are now not paying a top 10 quarterback, but they're paying a lot of guys top-tier money. They basically are paying for a top-tier quarterback, even though the quarterback room is cheap. And they haven't had picks because of the Trey Lance thing, because of the CMC trade. How do you replenish things when they're running low if you don't have the high-end picks to go and do so? So at some point, like that's going to catch up to you. I'm not saying it's right now. It certainly looks like it after Sunday, but we still have a couple more preseason games. We don't know exactly you know, why things happen the way they happened. But I, I just think that that time is coming sooner rather than later. And when it happens, a lot of times it catches you by surprise. You have a lot of assumptions of what a team is going to be, what the depth's going to look like, how good certain players are. And then all of a sudden, one player ages a little bit quicker than you thought. The depth isn't there anymore. And everything falls apart overnight. So I, I just I think it's something to monitor in these next two preseason games. Like, to me, I know all the talk is going to be about, you know, Trey Lance, Sam Darnold, or Brock Purdy when he finally gets out there. Really, I want to see what the depth of this team looks like because that's what's going to be important. It's a, it's a war of attrition for these teams throughout the regular season. And if you, especially if you don't get the number one seed, it's even worse as you head into the playoffs. I am so curious to see this offensive and defensive second units going forward. And I, I just hope that they can make the improvements that they're really going to need in order to win this season, in my opinion.